up, Jammies? Welcome back to another episode of Ricky's Ram Jam presented by Barefoot Wine. Big show coming up today. We got some Rams things to talk about. There's a lot going on in the NFL news cycle. Got a fan question of the week, potentially. And then I have one of my great friends. He is a media superstar, Mike Golick. Oh, wait, it's his kid. It's Mike Golick Jr. who's joining me. And I'm super excited to talk with him about all things Rams and food. And he's a known foodie and Swifty. It's just going to be great. Jamie's, you're in for such a treat of an episode. Okay. The Seahawks are the ones to beat in the NFC West. The Cardinals come to town this weekend. It's going to be great being back at home. This past week, I got the opportunity to go to the Hearts of LA Gala at Bank of California Stadium, which is home to LAFC, Los Angeles Football Club, the soccer team, which was super cool. They won the MLS Cup this past weekend, and it was amazing to just be in that stadium. I haven't been before. It was like an open bar, food, and then a comedy show, and they were raising money for um, the Ola's of efforts in the LA community, which was really, really cool. I also got to spend some time with some Rams employees from different departments that I wouldn't normally spend time with. And there were some students there from the from the local school practicing documentary filmmaking. So they were like asking me some questions and stuff. And I sat with them for a little while. It was just a really awesome night to be surrounded by people, you know, just a reminder of of doing good in the community and and just I'm just I feel so honored and blessed to be part of this Rams organization to be able to go to opportunities like this it was it was awesome speaking of more opportunities like this walk United LA is this weekend at SoFi so Sunday at SoFi is the Cardinals game but the day before Saturday we have um, United Way's mission to create housing education and opportunities for all Andrew Whitworth is this year's honorary chair if you want to join us or walk or just donate to go you can sponsor me if you go to the um you know walk united la site uh you can search in erica tamposi you can sponsor me for walking the 5k or you can join donate whatever you want to do um just go to unitedwayla.org or you can type in you know la walk united sofi like it's very 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 easy to find um i'll tweet my sponsorship link if anyone is interested in supporting i heard aloe black is performing it's gonna be like a just a party walking helping out the community and it's and it's a huge effort to to help out this community so i definitely think you should go if you're in the area and it sounds like it's going to be a a blast so fan question of the week like I said you can always send emails to Ricky's Ram Jam at rams.nfl.com and I try to get through a few I'm gonna skip it this week because Mike is about to join me and he is the best talker I know I want to be like him and I just know he's gonna have so much good stuff to say and there was a lot of questions about what's the overall vibe of this team or how do you keep your head up right now And I really want you to go check out all of the content that the Rams are putting out on their YouTube page, social media, just the the LARams.com. Check it out. The pressers, McVay is on the Coach McVay show, and he's talking about the different O-lines and how this team needs to come together and how football's a team sport and all three phases need to be connected. We post all of his press conferences on Twitter, online. Go check them out because I, I promise you, like, this team is is resilient and they are fighters and it's one week at a time and, and that's how this team's going to handle it. As you know, Jammies, we love football and we love our sponsor, Barefoot Wine. You know wine and football aren't that different. Sure, they can be complex, but enjoying them should be easy and both are easier to enjoy with friends. So I'm happy to be pairing my Barefoot Wine with my wonderful friend and guest today, Mike Golick Jr. Mike, hello! Oh, man, a wine-based audio format and video format here. Uh, This is living out my dream. I grew up watching so much of Kathy Lee and Hoda on during the day, (laughs) and I was always so jealous they got to drink at work. Right, right. Yeah, I, I, like, made that in my contract when I came to the Rams. I was like, hey, I love the organization. I want to be a part of this winning culture in and off the field. I want to be here, but I have to be drunk at least, you know, 10 times a week. So as long as that's okay, then then that's fine. When you're the best at what you do, you get to make those kind of demands. (laughs) 
Yeah, and not uh, we got to drink barefoot responsibly, you guys. I just meant, you know, have a constant stream into into my veins of, of all of all times. So, Mike, for those that don't know, you host a daily show called The Gojo Show. You were with ESPN for a while. You travel and do college football stuff 24-7. You're most known maybe for the Oreos and Mayo. Is that like a good byline, you think? Yeah, no, that's an accurate summary of what my life has been so far here. Flawless, no notes. The The mayo and Oreo thing is going to be a literal and metaphorical stain that follows me for the rest of my life, but I wear it proudly. I am happy that I ticked off the entire country of Australia and R&B legend Dionne Warwick. I regret nothing. Yeah, that is, that should, you, did you frame that tweet? I'm still going to figure out how to get them either into a frame or a blanket somewhere so I can <laughs> wear them at all times. Oh, like a shirt too, just like every oh. So you so go the Gojo show is is a daily show? Daily podcast Monday through Friday uh with the fine folks over at uh DraftKings and so yeah, it's been a ton of fun. It's nice to have a daily outlet because as you know in being friends with me, I like to talk a lot and if I wasn't <laughs> given a platform to talk a lot publicly every day, I would probably spontaneously combust. Absolutely. You took the words out of my mouth. I was like, I think you might actually explode. Um, what, so what's a daily show like? Do you record at night? Are you doing it live early in the mornings? Like back in the day, back in your ESPN radio days, you would be going into a bathroom recording at four and four in the morning if you're traveling or, or crazy stuff. Is your schedule lightened up a little bit with a daily show? Um, a little bit. It's a mix of both, right? Because we're, in some cases, trying to do evergreen stuff because it's a podcast. And in other cases, we do want to kind of be everyone's daily source that they can walk into the day and say, all right, if I go with and hang out with this show for an hour, I can get a little bit of what's going on, what's going on during the NFL since we're in season. And you've got primetime games during the week. You've got, you know, reacting to Sunday night football. So we've recorded in the morning. We've recorded at night. We've recorded with friends which is always wonderful and it, it's been a it's been a nice mix uh to say the least so far here. I'm lucky to do it my uh my co-host and producer was one of my teammates in college, a guy named Brandon Newman who has been working around the industry for a while, so it makes it a lot nice. more fun to get to go through it with someone that I've known for almost half my life at this point. Wow, that's amazing. So, if I was thinking about turning Ricky's Ram Jam into a daily show, like what do you think the like am I cut out for it? I don't know if I am. Uh, see, I, Ricky, I think you're the perfect combination of the glitz and glam of Hollywood that obviously goes with the namesake. Everyone knows big L.A. star power. That's why the Rams went out and were like, we got to get her. We need her in the fold here. It's what's going to take us to the next level. But I do think there's more grit inside of you than you're giving yourself credit for right now. We know. Thor we know is the Rams. like, I disagree. Yeah, I strongly object. And also, where is dinner? Where is dinner, woman? Um, but yes, no, I think there's more grit inside you than you and your dog are giving yourself credit for. I appreciate that. Thor, is, I opened the window and someone walked outside and he had to let everyone know that that there was someone potentially intruding on a, on a daily's Ricky's Ram Jam. <laughs> um, okay, so Mike... You, like you said, your Gojo show is sponsored by DraftKings. It's voting day today as we tape this. You know, you work in sports betting, and it's being legalized across the country. People are voting for it in California as we go. How do you think, you know, more or less about California, more about the bigger changing in, in the sports gambling world? Like, is that a super big part of what you do every day? Or I know that's like a very vague, loaded question. <laughs> no, it, 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 it it's, but it's where this is all going to your point. It, it's been fascinating to watch that transition and, my dad always makes this joke from years ago when Tony Romo wasn't allowed to go to a fantasy football convention. And now right. you've got these logos all over NFL stadiums. There's partnerships with so many of the major professional sports leagues. And I always tell people, because it is a part of our show in certain ways, and it's something that's become more of my life, but it's one, something so many people were already doing, right? And I think as we talk about sports and cover sports, we're always trying to meet fans where they are. This is another right. place where fans are and another way that we can try and help be informative. But also sports gambling is a lot like 
what it was for fantasy sports and a lot of its predecessors, it's just a really dialed in way to watch football. When you talk to right. people that are sports gambling experts, they're just aware of everything, right? They're hyper aware of injury reports, what the weather's going to be look like, all things that if I was still playing on a football team, you'd be concerned about heading into a game weekend. And so I right. think it's created in a lot of cases, really smart, savvy fans who are even more in tune with all of the daily things that go into making an NFL football game at the end of the week or an NBA game or anything like that than, than maybe we've ever had before. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it would be a huge... I love all the content. I mean, it's giving you the ability to do a daily show on your own. Like, I just think that the opportunities that come with it are super yeah. exciting too. Even if you're not a gambler, like you said, I, I am really not the most um and like savvy with that like the pluses and the minuses it's just like too much for me but I can talk sports all day so if I'm like I feel like this is the team that's gonna win I can totally see how it would get people like like fantasy football got people involved in in the sport more too so I think that's a great point. It's about access and whether right. it's analytics as another part of the game that's come in lately. I think these are all good because the more people that have access to sports, the better. You never want it to be some gatekeeping situation where for so long, even the jobs in media used to just go to former players. You should just go to people that had those long, illustrious careers. And now you get so many different vantage points because of all these access points and opportunities. So I'm with you. That's a great point. And a great part of this. For sure. So the Rams are coming off of a heartbreaking loss to the Tampa Bay Bucks this past weekend. Um, they're back at home. The Cardinals are coming back to SoFi since the playoff loss that they were last there. The Rams went to the Cardinals in week three and beat them in Phoenix. Um, the Cardinals are coming off a tough loss to the division leader Seahawks. I'm – I – how how <laughs> I'm struggling here because I want to say that this is the this is a must win game for them and how can the Rams come together to ensure a win on Sunday? Yeah, so uh, you're right that this point in the year, especially inside the division for the Rams, these are important spots. The season certainly hasn't gone the way that Rams fans have wanted to, and. We know a lot of it has to do with the offensive line, right? It's a really important position group on any team. The Rams have been more decimated by injury at that position than any team I've seen in quite some time. And so a lot of this is understandable. That being said, we know up front, yeah, this Arizona Cardinals team got some great edge rushers, got some guys that you can count on there, and has some dynamic kind of tweener pieces. But they're also a little bit lighter in the middle. And so gives you an opportunity to maybe go out there and have an easier time getting some uh, movement on first and second down, keeping yourselves out. Because really, for the Rams, I think when you've got an offensive line that's got some new parts in there, got guys that are trying to gel, it's a hard thing. I played offensive eight line. starting O-line combo in eight games. The most important thing for any offensive line is continuity because so much of what you do requires on seeing everything five guys through one set of eyes, being able to communicate all that. And if you're constantly swapping out those parts, it becomes really difficult to do that. So one of the ways they can make it easier is going out there and being able to take advantage of, all right, this isn't a defense that's built up front the way Tampa Bay was that they just came right. off of where you got to worry about Vita Vea and these run pluggers in the middle of the box. If you can get some better looks and better third down situations, it keeps that Arizona team out of their packages on third down that are awesome, really fun to watch, really complex because of some of those athletic Zayvon Collins, Isaiah Simmons pieces that roam the middle of that. And then for the Rams, you can get yourself in a position to continue to make use of a guy who even through being a little bit beat up and even knowing that he's going to be the target in Cooper Cup has still been insanely productive for this right. team. And I think it's, you know, I think it's allowed Allen Robinson to start coming along a little bit more as of late. I think his development's been huge. And so I think just creating easier opportunities, especially in this game on third down against a team in Arizona that wants to live in that situation. And then you just got to contain Kyler on the other side. And with someone with as athletic as a defensive front and in the secondary with Jalen Ramsey, as the Rams have, I feel like they're uniquely athletically capable of going out and making sure that they can check Kyler Murray, try and keep him bottled up, and uh, unable to make those extra effort plays that have really been the hallmark of the Arizona offense so far this season. When you were playing, talk about like 
freak athleticism when you were playing and i'm not talking about you i am talking about bobby wagner jumping over the o-line um to to block that punt have have anyone ever jumped over you like that um not that i can remember because for so long and that was the the impressive part with bobby is the rules make it so you can't touch the guys that you're jumping over. You right. are protected class in the middle of that. So for him to do that as a clean jump, it's just a reminder. There's some people whose better is just better. And Bobby <laughs> Wagner, even though he is a bit on the older side, and my God, as I creep more and more into my mid-30s, I really find myself staring out at the Bobby Wagners of the world and going... I really appreciate what players who are further along in their career are doing because I have to foam roll just to go to the gym and get on the treadmill for a little bit (laughs) and then pop a couple of shoulder presses in there. He's going out there and hurtling other grown men. So he has my undying respect. That's terrifying. I have watched that highlight so many times. Like I can't even jump like into my bed like that, like even with a running start. So that is just insane. So I was wondering if you've ever been there and if it's just like a holy moment in slow-mo if you're like in that line and you're just like what can I do like what can you do at that moment you're just stunned it's it's well and it's stunned and so you've got on one hand you're looking at Bobby and all of a sudden he's gone so you're scared then (laughs) and then on the (laughs) back side of that he just El Diablo and the magic man just disappears (laughs) and then on the back end of it you hear the sound and you got you know the sound I'm talking about which is the double thud when a kick then hits the hands of the player who's going over to block that thing and so you have the disappearing act and then the sound it's like some horror movie stuff (laughs) definitely definitely so let's let's get back to O-line because I want your expertise in this and you talked about continuity a little bit like I said eighth starting o-line combo in in eight games how how do you build chemistry you said see it out of one eye like when you have all these different meaning is it something where you need to do more like o-line dinners out or you know trying to like what is what is the answer here uh, the answer is hopefully time and health. Like there, there aren't quick fixes at, at offensive line as a position. And I think with this offense, Sean McVay is a really creative play designer, play caller, all the things that he's been for this Rams team, him and Liam Cohen do a phenomenal job with that. And, and you know, have totally. it prior stops there. There are things that you can do in the play calling to try and take some of the heat off them in the interim, right? Screens, quick passing game, you know, trying to load up and get even more, you know, tight ends, guys near the line to help out in the run stuff in the interim. But it's really going to be about continuing to go out here and certainly build camaraderie. All those things are important. The the running joke when I was in college was you never saw any one one offensive lineman by themselves. It was really? always a running joke. We were like a herd of cattle going somewhere <laughs> at the same time at the same place. It's just how you've got to operate because the whole thing with offensive line is I have to know where I'm helping someone else and where someone else is helping me. Because right. the D linemen that we're going against are some of the best athletes in the world. You guys have one of the best, if not the best, D line athlete in the world in Aaron Donald on your team. Blocking that guy alone and by yourself is usually going to be a losing effort. And so figuring out where I'm supposed to help someone else with creatures like that and where someone else (laughs) is supposed to help me, it takes some time and understanding. And so I think it's a reminder. This is a long season, you know, 18 weeks, 18 week season now. Uh, Excuse me, I should say. Yeah, I can say it's all nuts. All of this takes some time, and I think you mentioned all those combinations until that steadies a bit. And yeah, if you can get back and you think you've got to make personnel moves and things like that, this is the NFL, this is big boy football, those are the things that happen. But I think time and continuity and hoping that you've weathered the worst of what's going to happen to you injury storm-wise will allow this group the opportunity to come together and to start to see that picture as one group. Yeah, it, it's it's been pretty pretty brutal. I think that Sean McVay said that Coleman Shelton may be coming back soon, and hopefully, you know, David Edwards is is out of concussion protocol sooner or later. Um, and then the the you know that can become a little bit more cohesive. As far as the Cardinals' offense, I think you know it is scary having DeAndre Hopkins back. 
as far as this, the Rams defense, I'm really not as worried. I know that they were taking a little flack for that last Tom Brady drive. First of all, it's Tom Brady with 45 seconds left. <laughs> They've been on the field the entire time, and they just had an incredible fourth down stop. Like, I do not I, – I have so much faith in this defense – and they've already they've beaten Kyler the last two times. So I'm feeling good about this game. And I've been I feel like I've been trying to say that every week. But especially with this game, it feels like ones that the Rams can really kind of take care of business with. Yeah, I, I think it's a great opportunity because on the other side, listen, looking at the Cardinals, there are a lot of questions about Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury over the back half of seasons. And I know some people looked and thought, well, maybe DeAndre Hopkins having that six-game suspension and coming back would be sort of a natural boost. And so far, I think that's mixed results. You saw even some bickering on the sideline between those two last game. And despite the fact that you re-signed the entire core of your organization in Steve Keim, Cliff Kingsbury, and Kyler Murray, I think a lot of us are still looking and wondering – all right, can this team mix things up enough, make the adjustments, not only you know, in-game, but in-season adjustments to make sure down the stretch they can go out there and have a chance? But so far through this season, it seemed like it's been wholly reliant on can Kyler Murray by time run 90 yards in the backfield and then make right. some sort of superhuman play? And you can only survive on that for so long. Absolutely, especially with that. And, and like you said earlier, I do feel like this Rams offense, too, was just – getting stuck against a really tough front with the Bucks, And hopefully, you know, you've got J.J. Watt and, and you've got some of those middle-of-the-tier middle, middle of the tier guys up up front, but I I think it's it's hopefully a, hopefully a get-right game. Before we go into the Ram Jam, Mike, where I, where I ask the same, that I ask every episode the same questions, do you have a pre-show ritual that you do for the mornings or maybe before games? Because what I just did before the show, I'm like kind of nasally because my allergies have been bad. So I saw it on TikTok to help with hangovers. So I don't know if it's going to help anything, but you fill a bucket of water and put a ton of ice in it and then you dip your face in it. And you basically dunk your head in an ice bath, essentially, and it's supposed to reshock your system. It's supposed to help with hangovers. I thought maybe it would clear my senses out, but I, I don't think it did any of the of the sinuses stuff, but I do feel really good. And I'm like wondering if maybe I should implement this into like pre Ricky's Ram Jam, like, all right, ice ice tub dunk, like time to do it. You know what? I do appreciate that part of my former life that I miss is consistent access to an ice bath because it does really yes. jolt you awake. And I am so soft now that the notion of my brother gets up every morning and he does that, you know, five minute really cold shower that's supposed to jack yeah. your nervous system up a little bit. I can't do that. I don't like being that cold in the morning. I'm already very fragile in the morning. So <laughs> I, I will say my pregame routine as a player was always not very healthy because I had a lot of nervous energy that I needed to get. I puked before every game I ever started, high school, really? college, or otherwise. I was just sitting there, and I would try to eat different things on game day, and I would try and eat different things the night before. I would try and make sure I was hydrated, but it was just one of those things. I didn't feel like, like I was ready to go. Just like a nervous puke. Just had to let a good old nervous yak out there. So I wouldn't Didn't recommend Josh that to Allen anybody. just say that he does that every game too? Like, wasn't yes. he on Von Miller's podcast and he was like, yeah, I throw up every game. Well, that and is like Mark, wild. Mark Slareth used to tell this story. I forget one of the O-lines that he was with either in Denver or in Washington where he said their whole group would sit around with a garbage can in the middle and they'd just be waiting <gasps> for the first guy to go and they would slide it his way. And everyone else would. And it was like the family oh. guy scene after that, which is incredible. Oh so God. I did feel good when Josh said that though, because he's a space alien super athlete. So if he's doing it, right. then I so must have like, been on. I'm something. in that. Yeah, I'm in that. Yeah. I I don't throw up before every podcast. I feel like that might be a little bit more different um than going out on onto the, you know, the Notre Dame field. Um but yeah, that's that's a good that's a good uh healthy habit <laughs> yeah. that I'm glad you kicked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can say PSA to everyone. Don't do that. Please, if you yeah. can avoid it. Throwing up is not fun. It's not a good but time. But you didn't like you didn't have to like, you know, hit the punching bag a couple times. It would just naturally just come up oh, like it so was, nervous. No. Hanging out you didn't right have to there make the whole yourself. time. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. And you don't get nervous for your your live shows or anything like that? That's No, it's, it's a lot be- it's a lot better now. I always tell people the best part about the media gig is no one's allowed to hit me. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's true. Well, I mean, yeah, allowed. They probably can, but they um, can. But it's you know, it's like anything else. Like I worked with my dad for three and a half years next to each other, and if we didn't come to blows there as well as we know each right. other, and as much as we had spent a childhood doing that kind of stuff, then everyone else kind of knew. All right. If they have, it's like we were kind of just waiting for that first one. If we haven't fought yet, then no one else felt comfortable jumping in. We set the right, tone. Right, 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 exactly. All right, let's hit our Ram Jam. So as a fan, which Rams moment is your favorite of all time? Ooh, I would say I always go back to like one of my earliest Rams memories was the one yard short Super Bowl against the Titans. Yeah. Like, Kevin Dyson and just that that reach out there and what a moment that was is one of the first times I can remember because 1999 I would have been like 11 years old and so yep. my football foundation was kind of being set in that era I think it was Super Bowl 34 and it was one of the first times I remember and it's one of the most exciting endings to a Super Bowl that we've ever had it, it's got all this folklore around it but I know at that point it wasn't the Los Angeles Rams but it was still just seeing that and kind of the awareness of that team that started to grow from just such an all-time moment. Absolutely. If you could eat only one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? One food for the rest of my life. All right. If I say cereal, do I only get one cereal? Uh, I'll give you two. All right. Ooh, okay. That's good. Um, so if I was going to do two, then I've got to have a balance of flavor. So on one side, I would go Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Uh, oh, it's the taste classic. you can see. A yeah. triumph, <laughs> says the New York Times. Um, so I would go that for one of them. And then for the other one, oh, man, it's so tough because I want to say Oops All Berries, Captain Crunch. The problem mm. is, as I'm sure you know, Captain Crunch will do a number on your mouth. And if I'm going to be eating this every day, I can't right. afford to have that raw mouth. So you know what? I'll balance it out and I'll say Fruity Pebbles. Just a totally different okay. palate experience. Fun yes. and exciting. A different relationship with milk in the bowl, but still very <laughs> enjoyable. And I like colors. I respond well to colors like a baby. Oh, I love that. Okay, yeah, that that fits really, really well. It's exactly what my youngest brother would eat for every oh, meal. It's perfect. Actually, you know what? Scratch that. I'm going to change it right now because I just remembered. Frosted mini weeds. It's wholesome. Ooh. It's very filling. I need a little bit. Of, I need a cereal with a little bit of ass to it. And I realized yeah. the way feel <laughs> of the yeah, frosted flakes wasn't going to be. Yeah, it wasn't going to be enough. So I'm going to go with um, with cinnamon toast crunch and uh frosted mini wheats final answer. i'm literally going to tweet out just that clip of you being like i need cereal with a little bit of ass to it and mm. just that standalone that is that is the tagline of this episode of ricky's ram jam i love that so much i want it tattooed on my body okay what would you do if fear was not a factor and you could not fail oh easy answer win the lottery yeah Oh my God. Yeah. And yeah. the winning Powerball ticket that just went is in LA. Well, it's in the Valley. It's like Altadena, but like, that's close. Like we were close. I didn't buy a ticket, but I did um, con contact my lawyer about what to do in case, you know? Yeah. Oh, listen, if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. When the last time Powerball was really big, I was in a uh, mini camp with the new Orleans saints. And every week I used to come in on Wednesday and I'd say, Hey guys, take a look. If I win today, this will be the last time you ever see me because I'm driving straight to the Louisiana <laughs> State Lottery office and I'm waiting there and then I'm going to disappear. So congratulations yep. to that person. But yeah, it would either be win the lottery or propose to Taylor Swift, either or. Oh my God. Which so is winning that, the lottery in its own right. Uh, yeah, that is, that is, okay. So this literally just transforms right into our easy to enjoy question of the week. Barefoot is easy to enjoy. Duh. So you're not leaving here, Mike, without discussing Taylor Swift. You are one of the biggest Swifties I know. Pre-sale is, is Friday. Okay. A third show was added to SoFi. I, I, are you nervous about Friday tickets? Like, how are you feeling in this moment leading up to this? I'm terrified. Terrified. Mm. I can't remember the last time. I know I said I don't pregame puke anymore. I might pregame puke before the <laughs> presale of the Taylor Swift Eras Tour tickets on Friday. Because yes. I have never seen Taylor Swift before in concert. I came what? to being a I came to being a Swifty a little later on in life. Red was kind of like, you know, that red album was my intro to Taylor my last couple mm. of years of college. And since then, I've missed out on, you know, the Reputation Tour and all that stuff. I didn't Banger. get to go to Loverfest because it was canceled. And yep. so now this is my first entry. And it's coming at a time where she's got four albums worth of material since we've last seen her on tour. And I don't want to miss this. So Friday's a big day. Yes, I am very nervous. 
Yeah, I, I'm going so far as to the fact as if, should I buy a seat license? Like, should I buy a season Ooh. ticket seat license to SoFi just so I can make sure that I am there? But I have a group chat going, and we're all talking about, like, what is our max? Like, what are we going to spend no matter what? I'm just, like, worried about getting in. Uh, like, all bets are off. I just want to get in. I think seeing her in SoFi is going to be the most magical thing ever. I also want to try to hit maybe three stadiums, but I know that that's just being selfish so like i just want to get in i just want to see her and i will do that at all costs oh without question and by the way I i'm willing to pull out all the stops for this like certainly i have a number in my head that's financially irresponsible that i'm willing to spend on tickets to get in here but also if anyone listening to this podcast with an earshot right now has some sort of connection and wants to send me and ricky yes. hollywood to see taylor yes. swift with a little bit yes. of added help We'll take it. Yes. I got no shame when it comes to this. I'll do anything. I will do anything. And I have a reasonable, financially responsible number that I'm willing to go over if the time comes and I have to, you know, pull out all, pull out all the stops. So you're, you're an off offensive lineman, a media superstar. You are a biggest, the biggest Bachelor fan that I know. You're a, you're a Swifty. You're also my perfect person. So, like, how to wrap this up – how is it so easy to just be Mike Golick Jr. because you're the coolest person I know? Um, God, I think it's easy because I, and the best advice I ever got from my dad, and it comes with a little bit of a backhanded thing at the end, was in any situation, it is the stock joke in my family. If anyone's ever going to do something new, starting a new job, anything like that, my dad always just goes, all right, be yourself, and very earnestly means it. And he has since added the clause, especially as I got into media, because you're not smart enough to be anybody else. I recognized pretty <laughs> early on, I couldn't go out here and fake it and try and be anyone else. I can't play a character. I'm not smart or committed enough to a bit to do that. And so my only option was to go out here and just lean into all of it. And thankfully, I've had a lot of people that have given me the space to do that, but I don't have any other options. And if it ever stops working out, it's really going to be a lot of trouble. So I am thankful that people still continue to pay me for somehow, some way to go out here and get to be myself on air. Well, I absolutely love the you that you are. So I am very thankful for you. And thank you, thankful for you stopping by. If we had more time, I would compare maybe Bachelor in Paradise contestants to, you know, the NFC West. But we can do that another time. Um, are you watching this season? It's crazy. I'm getting caught up on this season. I'm getting caught up on Love is Blind season three right now. You know oh, how it that's is. That's wild, too. During the season, it's so hard to balance all this, but this is why we do what we do, because we love it, because like we love established earlier, we're grinders and we're willing to put in that work. Absolutely. Mike, thank you so much. You guys check him out on Twitter. Check out the Gojo Show. Just be a fan of Mike Golick Jr. if you aren't already, because you are missing out. I promise. Thank you, Mike, so much for hanging out. Thanks, friend. Good to talk to you. There he goes. What a great guy. And I will be texting him on Friday. And now the stakes are even even higher. So like he said, any uh, jammies out there, let us know if we're going to see you at SoFi uh, for Taylor Swift. That does it for this week's Ricky's Ram Jam. Cheers. Let's ram it. It's going to be a great week. And we're on to Arizona. Well, they're coming to us. So it's our house, baby. I'll see you soon.